What is up guys? It is your boy Steady Chaos. In tonight's video, we are going to do calibrating your LG C1 OLED 101. So an introductory class to what you need as far as equipment and software to calibrate your TV and then how to use said equipment and software to calibrate the TV. All right, let's get it. All right, guys, so the aim of this video is to be the best LG C1 calibration step-by-step -step guide using Calman software to calibrate your LG C1, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna calibrate Cinema Home HDR. That's one of the few presets I have not calibrated yet on my LG C1. So before we jump into that, let's talk about where you can go to get your color meter, which you're gonna need to take the readings from the screen. That's what you see right here on the screen and then where to go to get Calman Home for LG. That's the software program you're going to have to download, which will do all the calibration readings and then tweaking for you, okay? So first things first, uh, Calman Home for LG. So this is sold by Portrait Displays. Now what you can do is just go to google.com and type in uh, Portrait Displays Calman LG. It'll pop right up, download. Calman Home for LG, okay? Now this is gonna cost some money, all right? This is 145 bucks, so it's not gonna break the bank, but it's not exactly 10 bucks either, okay? So just go into this knowing that you're gonna spend a few hundred dollars to properly calibrate your LG C1. So, $145, you wanna make sure you get Calman Home specifically for LG, okay? You've done that. Now the next thing is you need a color meter, something like this, okay? It doesn't have to be exactly what I'm using, but you will need some piece of hardware that's going to go on your screen's surface directly and that's going to interpret the patterns that Calman will create, okay? And as the coloring meter interprets those patterns, it takes readings and it sends the information back to Calman software. So you're going to need this, this coloring meter device. Now I have uh, the X-Rite i1 Display Pro Plus, which has served me well. I purchased it June 20th, 2021. It was around 250 bucks or so. Uh, right now, it's not available for purchase on Amazon, but you could do a Google search and buy it from another vendor. I would recommend this. It's a good entry-level model, and it can measure up to 2,000 nits, which is more than enough for most TVs, and especially enough for an OLED TV, which usually doesn't get over 1,000 nits. So once you have Calman Home for LG, the software downloaded for 145, and then you have X-Rite i1 Display Pro Plus, the color meter purchased. Uh, again, about 250 bucks. So all together, you're looking at it between 350 to 400 bucks for the color meter and the software. So once you have those two things, what you wanna do with your color meter is, it comes like this, okay? It has this, this is like a protective uh, casing, and then this is the lens right here inside that does all the readings. So what you wanna do is remove the casing, kinda of turn it off to the side like this, expose the lens and put it directly on the TV, okay? And then you wanna take the under end, other end of this cord from the coloring meter and plug it into your computer via USB. So once you've done that, you obviously want to install Calman, the software, which we have here, LG AutoCal, okay? Now, what I recommend you do to make sure you have an HDR feed up on your television is just, if you have a game console, turn that on and put it in HDR mode, okay? Now there's a few things you need to do. I have PlayStation 5 up on my LG C1. Now you wanna to go to settings in your PlayStation 5. You wanna to go to screen and video. You wanna to go to deep, no, RGB range. Right now it's on automatic. Calman recommends for a video source, such as a television, like the LG C1 here, that you calibrate in limited range, okay? Now, a lot of people will say, but steady, I'm using my LG C1 as my PC monitor, so shouldn't I have a full range? Ideally, you would, yes, but Calman recommends you do a limited range for this television as most media sources, like Blu-rays, television, like cable TV, etc., is mastered in a limited range, okay? And most TVs display a limited range, okay? So they say you will get a better calibration result from using a limited RGB range. So set it in limited, everything else can stay the same. Your HDR is on. So go back to the main menu or the main screen. Now hold down the gear button on your LG C1 remote. There's a couple things you're gonna wanna do in the menu system before you calibrate. Go to the gear, make sure AI service, all of these features are off. 
off, off, off. You don't want the television to be adjusting or manipulating the brightness or, or the clarity or anything like that while you're taking readings with your coloring meter because that could mess up the numbers. So that's off. Go back to picture. We're going to do HDR mode cinema home. Okay, so make sure you're on cinema home. Advanced settings. Brightness. I would highly recommend you turn off tone mapping. Turn that off. Okay, you will not get an accurate reading in HDR tone mapping because the, the brightness will be fluctuating all over the place. So definitely turn that off. Everything else can stay the same. Black level. Again, we want to make sure it's limited just like it was in the PlayStation 5. Make sure that's limited. Everything else is okay. Color. Uh, I would recommend to get... To get a more accurate baseline reading for Calman and your coloring meter, I would just adjust the color down to 50. 60 is overdoing it. And then everything else can stay the same. White balance, you're going to want to put it all the way to warm 50 to get closer to that D6500 white point. And then clarity, sharpness, zero. Super resolution off. You do not want any of these picture enhancement or AI functions on, like I said earlier. MPEG noise reduction off. Noise reduction off. Smooth gradation off. True motion off. Now, sometimes in different picture presets, it won't use the same white balance sliding scale, so you won't be able to choose warm 50. You'll have the option to choose warm 1, 2, or 3. In that instance, use warm 2, okay? So we can get out of here. Now, we open up our Calman software, as we see here. Go to this green bar. Open workflow template. Display specific. Click LG Auto Cal, because that's what we're doing. LG Auto Calibration. OLED, that's fine. HDR, hit next, because we're calibrating HDR, right? Okay. Now, your X1... I write Display Pro is on your screen. It's plugged in via the USB port to your computer. If you haven't found it in your software here, see how it says X write I1 Display Pro Retail. If your Calman has not located your coloring meter yet, you're going to want to hit Find Meter, and then it should detect it automatically for you. And then once it does, you want to go to Raw XYZ Generic CM, uh, CMF right here. Okay. Now, on step two, you're going to want to select Find Source. You're going to tab down to LG because we're calibrating an LG. You're going to want to go to 2020 slash 2021 Alpha 9. And now what you're going to want to do is find the IP address of your LG C1 so that you can link up your television via the internet or Wi-Fi to your computer and Calman software. Okay, your TV has to be connected to the internet to do this. So hold down the gear button on your LG C1 remote. Go to general, go to network, go down to Wi-Fi connection, go down to other network, go down to advanced Wi-Fi settings, and then you see it right here. Your IP address minus 10.0.0.56. You're gonna wanna write that down on a pad of paper, okay? So write that down. I have mine written down already. We're going to take that IP address and we're going to plug it right in here into this box. So 10.0.0.56 connect. Searching for LG. All right. Now what you should see is a pin number like this pop up. You're going to want to put that number into this pin box on the Calman. So 377251193. Okay, and if it is correctly linked or connected, your TV that is, to Calman software on your computer, you should get a gradient bar, a grayscale bar like this, okay? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to select a 5% window. Calman recommends you do 10%. I think 5% is better because that is the absolute peak brightness of your LG C1. It's going to be a 2 or 5% window. Now, what I mean by a window is the little square that's going to show up on your screen, okay? The little pattern that Calman will generate. And then that square is where your coloring meter goes to interpret the readings to take the calibrations, okay? If you do a 2% square, you're talking about a square that's going to be really, really small, and you might have a hard time getting your coloring meter right on it. 
If you do a 10% square, it'll be a lot larger. You won't have a hard time getting your color meter in the center of said square, but you might not get the brightest reading. So I find 5% square is like this big. It's a good kind of compromise between the brightness of 2% and maybe the slightly more dimmer 10%, okay? So window 5%. Your color space is certainly Rec 2020 because we're doing HDR. Gamma formula is ST2084 HDR PQ. D65 is your white point for sure. And then these default settings can stay the same. Now we're going to come up to these right hand tabs real quick. The X-Rite i1 Display Pro, we're going to look real quick. This is all fine, all fine. Standard exposure, a low light handler, low light mode. That's all fine. Leave that the same. Next tab over under LG. Window again, 5%. Now here where it says color space, you want to change this to HDR 2020. That's critical. Otherwise you won't get a correct calibration. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select optimize right here. What this optimize button does in my testing, what I, I don't have an official answer actually, because what I did is I emailed portrait displays so that I could find out exactly what optimize does and they never got back to me. Uh, I'm sure they're bogged down, they're busy, but their customer service never got back to me. So what I believe it does is it optimizes the pattern that Calman generates on the screen um, for how long, you know, location, things like that uh, with your coloring meter so that it gets sort of the best possible readings. So let's hit optimize. Let it do its thing. This takes a, a couple of minutes. All right, let's move the color meter to the center of the screen where the square is. That's your pattern. So this pattern, like I said, this creates, you know, your colors, it creates your grayscale, your your green color like this. These are the patterns that your color meter is reading and it's sending these uh, readings back to Calman to interpret and calibrate. So it's important to make sure that your color meter is in the center of this 5% pattern. So it's updating LG, setting repeatability for magenta, just let it do its thing. Okay, so the optimization is complete. You are ready to begin the process. Okay, now let's go over to the direct display control and just look real quick, that looks fine. Let's go and click on this gear, BT2020 HDR, that is correct. The gamma formula is correct. Again, remember I talked about the RGB range. You wanted that to be limited. So we set limited in the PlayStation 5, and we set limited on the LG C1. Uh, Calman and Portrait Displays officially recommends that you use the limited range, okay? So you see here, lumin luminance level, video is limited range, 16 to 235. That is correct. Everything else can stay the same. Workflow, that's all fine. Application measurement options, that's all fine. Actually, come down here to Auto Cal Targets. Make sure your Delta E formula is DE underscore ITP. Cube Delta E formula, DE underscore ITP, okay? Set those two to those values. Everything else can stay the same. And then application preferences up here, that can stay the same. So close that out by hitting this little arrow. Come down here and hit next. Now what's gonna happen, it's going to, the software is gonna take pre-calibration measurements. So you're gonna get an idea of what your TV is in terms of accuracy in HDR cinema mode before calibration. And then what you can do is once you're done calibration, when you're all done, you know, doing readings and all that and out auto cal is done with the calibration, you can compare your pre-calibration measurements to your post-calibration measurements and see how much improvement you've achieved, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here to the bottom right and we're gonna select read series. This is probably gonna take about five minutes and it's gonna take color calibration, delta error for color, peak brightness or luminance. It's gonna check your RGB balance and it's gonna ch uh, check your delta error readings. And when we're all said and done, uh, I'll actually, you know what, when this pre-calibration is done, what we can do is 
we can take a look at all these numbers and I'll tell you how to interpret these charts and graphs, okay? Okay, so the process is complete. And the readings aren't bad at all. You see an average error for color performance at 1.8 and an average grayscale error of 3.7, again, in cinema mode for HDR on the LG C1. So, so in order to interpret this, what you're looking at is the color spectrum here. And again, this is the DCI P3 and Rec 2020 color format in HDR mode. So these little dots signify the various color readings and then the squares signify where you want the readings to be. So for the most part, uh, all these little dots are either in the squares or they're at least touching the outside of said squares, which is pretty darn good. Uh, for the average error, okay, what you want is a value below five. Anything below three on average is considered good. Anything below one is considered reference level, which means basically it doesn't get any better than that. So we got a 1.8, which is a very, very good score, okay? Down here, you see your various colors, and that's where you get your overall average delta error of 1.8. The higher the bar, the greater the error. So you see with white, we have a 5.9. That's our max error. That's our biggest miss value, 5.9. You come down here to something like light skin, your target and your actual, we only have a 0.4, so that's reference level accurate, okay? So these bars, the lower they are, the more accurate you are, okay? RGB balance, now this is your mixture of the colors, the primary colors, red, green, and blue. Ideally, you want them all to overlap one another, just like this, and that's what they do for the most part as they go across the TV's entire brightness spectrum. So overlapping, overlapping, overlapping. You see them rise a little bit, and then you see this big curious dip starting at 60 and through 80 right here. This is your television's tone mapping creating this dip in HDR, okay? In SDR, because there's no HDR, you'd have a straight bar all the way across. You wouldn't have this dip. But again, because we're in HDR, because the TV's tone mapping algorithm it creates this dip. That is totally normal, okay? That's totally normal, that's totally acceptable and expected, okay? So that's not a mistake. So you see though, even throughout this dip, what you want is you want your blue, red, and green colors to perfectly overlap. So you see right here, beginning at about 50 and through 100, especially around 90 to 100, green is a little bit low, Red uh, is a little bit lower than blue. You have a little bit of separation of these colors. You have a little bit too much blue. So calibration hopefully will fix this. Okay, now your grayscale performance, average error is 3.7, max 9.3. The same for this. Ideally, you want something below five. Anything in average error below three, it's considered very good. Anything below one is again, reference level, meaning almost perfect. So we're 3.7, not an excellent reading, but a very good reading for cinema HDR for the LG C1. So you look down here, these are your various grayscale readings, and that's how you get the average error of 3.7 based on these readings. So the similar to the color delta readings here, the lower your bars are here, the more accurate they are. The higher your bars are, the more inaccurate they are. So you see around 80, we have a 7.1, 75, we have a 9.2. So they're pretty accurate, well into 65, and then and when you get into the higher numbers, up to around 70 through 100, you get some inaccuracies in your tones of gray. Calibration will hopefully fix this, okay? Now here in your luminance, the yellow is the target luminance curve, through your TV's brightness range and HDR, the gray is the actual performance of your TV. So really good uh, tracking of the luminance curve up through about 375 nits with a gentle roll off at about 730 or so nits, which is the C1's peak brightness in cinema mode. This is a very, very good result and probably won't get much better, uh, much better with calibration, but that's okay. All right, so your pre-calibration measurements are done. We know what the readings are. We know how to interpret them now. Let us proceed. So what we can do is hit next. Now, once again, we need to reconnect the TV to the software. This is the last time you'll have to do this. I'm not sure why they ask you to do this again, but you have to. So find LG TV. You wanna click on this model bar. 
You want to go to 2021 Alpha 9 Gen 4 OLED C1, okay? If you're using a C1, G1, M1, R1, Z1, QNED 99, QNED 95, Nano 99, Nano 95, this is what you want, 2021 models, okay? Then once again, you got to put the IP address of your television in. So I wrote that down. So it's 10.0.0.56. Connect. Okay, so we have LG 2021 Alpha 9 Gen 4 display device. That is correct. Now we want to check HDR. We want to check BT 2020, right? That's the color space we want in HDR. Now, what we want to do is make sure we select the right cinema mode, HDR cinema. That's what we're calibrating. Remember, HDR cinema. So select that. The screen will flash green. That's totally normal. That's what you want. The software is still thinking. Okay, that's done. Now, after selecting your picture mode, click the full DDC reset button. This resets and prepares the, the picture mode for calibration. Okay, so full DDC reset, calibration start. It's fine to see these little uh, warnings on the bottom of your screen. That's totally normal. Okay, once that calibration reset is complete, or the full DDC reset is complete, you can go down here to next. Now we want to make sure here that we enable calibration. This is checked. You want that to be checked. Next. Okay, so we are prepared to start calibrating this television. So this is gonna take anywhere, depending on your computer, this could take anywhere from about 23 or four minutes to up to about 34 or 35 minutes. So this can take some time. So we're gonna come down here to the bottom right. And we're gonna select auto calibration. All right, one more step before we go into full calibration here, we get this little box. Now this stuff at the top above this line, that's all fine, enabled, check. Now, active grayscale points, 20 points HDR is fine. You could do 42 points HDR, but that means it's gonna take more measurements and it's gonna take way more time and you're probably not gonna get much better of a calibration result. So I would really recommend you just keep it at LG 20 points HDR. It's a good balance of accuracy and time. Uh, it, it, again, if you do 42 points, you are gonna be here for over an hour. So I, I would not recommend that. And your delta E target is 0.5. So remember when we talked about average color error, anything below three is good, anything below one is reference. What the software is saying is it's targeting 0.5 as its end result after calibration for all the various readings. This is good. If you want the calibration to be a little quicker and you want to allow it to be a little less accurate, you could bump this number up to one or maybe even 1.5. But I would just recommend you keep it at the default setting here. Select OK. And I think we're good. I think calibration has commenced. And now we are at the point where this is going to take, like I said, anywhere from 23 to 34 or 35 minutes. And you see here, this little box, updating LG 2021 Alpha 9 Gen 4, setting up Grayscale AutoCal, one of 23 points. So yes, we'll reconvene after this process is done and then we'll go from there. All right. All right, guys, we are back and you can see here the full grayscale calibration completed successfully. It took 29 minutes and two seconds with 170 total reads. Okay, let's hit next. Now we are going to calibrate our color space using a custom LUT, which is a lookup table, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down to the bottom right here and we're gonna select auto calibration.
This shouldn't take too long. Okay, now everything up here is fine. Now down here we can leave the delay at 0.25. Uh, check, set 3D LUT gray, uh, grayscale to Unity. Now what we're gonna use is the matrix LUT. You look here, it says press the Auto Cal button to calibrate the color management system on your display. Matrix LUT is the only method supported for HDR 3D LUT calibration. So if you select, there's a bunch of options here, but you definitely need to select matrix LUT in HDR. Select OK and let it do its thing. Updating LG 2021 Alpha 9 Gen 4. Let's sit back for a minute. All right. Aurora color engine calibration completed successfully. It only took 53 seconds with five total reads, OK. Now we can select next in the lower right. Now we're going to set our peak luminance. So we first have to measure the peak luminance. So select that. It's going to measure your TV's peak luminance in a 5% window. So we got 730.4 nits in cinema mode. So what we're gonna do is go up to this top bar luminance here and we're gonna put in 730 nits, hit enter, and then your remaining values can stay at default, okay? Come down here, select next. Now we're gonna uncheck enable calibration at this point. As you can see the directions, now we need to uncheck the enable calibration checkbox, which will turn back on the HDR processing in the TV. You will then validate the calibration against the HDR10 calibration targets. Okay, so select next in the bottom right. Here we are, post calibration verification. Okay, so you're gonna see basically how your calibration went. What do the readings look like for color, for grayscale accuracy, for luminance, tone curves, things like that. Did it come out well or not? So let's find out. We're going to select read series. This won't take too long, a few minutes. All right, so our post calibration readings are done. Let's select next. Okay, so now we can compare our pre and post. And honestly, it's this was not really the best calibration. The thing you'll note about Calman is it's AutoCal, right? It's auto calibration. The software is using a, an algorithm to create these patterns and to interpret the measurements from your color meter and to calibrate accordingly. And every run's a little bit different. Some runs through AutoCal are better than others. This wasn't the best run, but there is definitely some improvement, okay? So if you look at the colors over here, you see that most of these dots we noted are inside the squares, but there's a lot like in green and down here in blue where they're just on the perimeter of the squares. If you look at our post calibration, you see that all the dots are pretty firmly inside the squares. So whereas you had a max color error of 5.9 pre-calibration, now you have a max color error of 3.4 post calibration, okay? You've improved white. You see this major error here in white, pre-calibration 5.9. Now it's all the way down to a 0.3. But your average error still stayed the same, 1.8 and 1.8. So you should see more improvement there. So that's a little disappointing. Now your RGB balance, you see here it's pretty good. And then you have deviation when you start getting to around 60 or 70. Light on green, red is pretty accurate, but heavy on blue. If you look at your RGB balance afterwards, that's much improved. That's much better RGB balance. So now you won't be getting that blue push. And then you look at your delta error for grayscale, you have an average of 3.7 and a max of 9.3. After calibration, you have an average of 2.1 and a max of 6.6. .6. So again, improvement, you can see your bars here are lower overall. You see that you have some pretty high spikes, 70, 70 to about 100. 
And here, after calibration, 65 to 100 is a lot better, but you still have some pretty high bars. 75 has a 6.6 .6 error, that's your highest error. So these could be improved, I think, with another run as well. But regardless, you did see improvement, 3.7 pre, 2.1 post, uh, 9.3 max error pre, 6.6 .6 post. So overall, not a terrible result from Kalman. You had improvement, but I think we could make things better with another run at some point. But that'll be up to you to try and run uh, again in your own time if you don't like the results, okay? So that's gonna pretty much do it for this video. Now, if you want to save these results and upload them into your television, what you have to do is come down here to the bottom right, hit save data. Now you can hit this edit button. You can call it, uh, let's call it cinema. HDR. Save edits. Save calibration session. And that's it. You have saved your calibration session. So in order to disconnect all of your equipment, what you wanna do is come up to this tab, the x right I want to display retail. You can just hit disconnect. Come to the LG tab, hit disconnect. Your TV will come back to you. See, there it is. And then under the LG 2021 Alpha 9 Gen 4 HDR Cinema, just hit disconnect again. Just to make sure you're fully disconnected from everything. And that's it. You're all done. You can hit the X out button on the program. You already saved the data, so just hit no. And you are all done. So anyway, guys, hopefully you found this particular... Uh, walkthrough of calibrating the LG C1 in HDR cinema mode helpful. If you have any questions or comments whatsoever, please leave them in the comment section down below. I can guarantee you I will get back to every single one of your comments, okay? All right, guys, I will see you later. Peace.